Hello all of my YouTube people. So it is a sunny day today as you guys can see and it's a little warmer actually than it's been for a while so I decided I might as well take the dine out since I'm paying for insurance anyway might as well put it to some use and I figured it's a good opportunity to go for a ride to take you guys with me still waiting on my other GoPro so we just got the one camera angle today but that's okay because it'll still be a good ride so I'll see you guys on the road since it's nice out today I thought I might as well just go for like a good little ride so that's what we're gonna do we're gonna go for a good little ride and hopefully get out of this traffic and actually enjoy some of this not too shabby riding weather. I kind of have been thinking about just taking the insurance off the Dyna for the winter. And I know every time I talk about insurance, there's so many like questions and just it's so different everywhere. I was fully under the impression that in the majority of the states in the U.S., you had an option to choose vehicle insurance. But since I posted my last video talking about that, I've had a bunch of comments saying that vehicle insurance is mandatory. It sounds like in a lot of the states. And with the exception of Florida, that they don't require motorcycle insurance and I and there was like so much debate going on in the comments over this and I looked it up I actually searched it because I wanted to know and Florida is the exception to the rule for motorcycle insurance you don't you don't have to have it it's not mandatory you can choose to have it or not have it but it's not the case here you don't get to choose whether or not you want your motorcycle insured you have to have it insured and they actually charge you way more for motorcycle insurance than they do for like any other type of vehicle basically like to put my dyna on the road for a month is a hundred and thirty dollars a month for the most basic insurance if i wanted to have like good liability and like you know other stuff on there it would be close to two hundred dollars a month which is crazy and it's just a major ripoff and it's like that because our provincial government i think back in the 90s sometime they completely did away with private insurers so you can't go through any private insurer for your basic um, like your mandatory level of insurance you have to go through the provincial government basically like the provincial government's insurance to insure and they just nickel and dime you for absolutely everything like to put insurance on my bike you gotta buy a license plate right so you get you pay thirty dollars for your license plate and then they're like, okay, but you know, when you return your plate, you get your $30 back. But then if I'm gonna cancel my insurance, then I have to bring my plate in and it's a $30 cancellation fee. So that's my, my plate fee right there. You don't get it back if you cancel. We do have like different options for the length of time that we insure. So the minimal amount of time, like you can insure it for a day, which is like 50 bucks for a day of insurance. So no one really does that unless you need to for some reason. So you can buy three months of insurance. You have to pay up front. And then if you want monthly, then you can go six months. There's no in between. You can't go four or five months. It's three months. So you have to pay it all up front. Or you can go six months and then it's monthly. Or you can go 12 months. My Dyna has been insured. I put a 12 month plan on it because it's cheaper by the month the longer you go. Not by much, but a little bit. So if I don't want insurance on my dime anymore, then I have to go and cancel. Now, if I would have only insured it for six months, my insurance would have just lapsed and I keep my license plate 
and then in the springtime I just go and I renew my insurance which is free to renew you don't have to pay any renewal fee or anything like that that's normally actually how I do it I'll normally depending on the what the riding season ends up being like here then I'll insure for three months and I'll just pay it all up front and then after the three months is over then I'll do the month to month on a six month plan and then that way I've got like my whole riding season basically and uh, yeah it's pretty nice I've never been up here before. What is this? A speed bump? One of these roads? One of these speed bump roads? Hey, I'm turning around. I'm not doing these speed bumps. They're so annoying. So yeah, it's kind of just, I don't know, like paying like $130 a month to insure a motorcycle that I might ride five times each month if the weather's nice where it's been raining for the last like two days and then it's supposed to rain like all this week coming up and then it's supposed to be cold and I don't mind riding when it's kind of cold but like I said like I don't I don't have anything that I need to prove to anybody about being like hardcore or anything like that I just want to ride and enjoy it and if you're not enjoying it, then what's the point? If I had a windshield on my bike right now, it would be, like, I'd be able to go pretty far, actually. I'd be able to do a pretty good trip, even without a windshield. Get cold on the highway though. I think I need some electric gear. Get an electric vest and gloves and some electric chops would be nice and I'd be able to ride forever. This is basically like highway speed. So I'm going a little slower. But if I had a windshield on it would definitely make a huge difference I just wanted to see what it was like without the windshield I was thinking about putting my windshield on but then I was like oh, I kind of want to see how it feels without it today because it's like not bad it's like 12 degrees out right now 12 degrees Celsius It's actually nice and sunny. It's a good day. Roads are dry. There's other people on their bikes out. It's a good day for a ride. a little bit chilly yeah so I think I'm gonna stop and get a tea and warm up a little bit after we get off this road I wasn't really planning on taking this road all the way down but I guess I am now it's actually nice I don't think I've gone all the way down this road with you guys before This is kind of like a back road that kind of bypasses a good chunk of the highway. So it's nice. It's nice to avoid all the stop and go traffic with all the lights and stuff. I went up that way to the right when I went to go shoot for Halloween. Yeah, we still got lots of leaves on the trees and it's just so nice.
stop up here and get a coffee. Well, get a tea. Warm up a little bit. So nice being able to put your cold hands on a warm drink. <laughs> oh, my hair is such a mess right now. I love Tim Hortons steep tea. I think I've warmed up for long enough and it's time to get back home and actually do something. I was actually just looking at mic settings. I've been using this Rode wireless mic for a while now and I just like don't understand like decibel settings is zero the lowest setting like for wanting to reduce wind noise for example i don't understand if zero setting on the decibel is going to reduce it more or less or if i should have it set to like a minus like a minus 12 to reduce the wind noise more than what zero would i don't understand it and i was trying to read about it online but no one really just says which way is up or down when it comes to the decibel settings. I always have it set to zero, but I notice that on the highway then I get like lots of crackling in my mic. So anyway, I'm gonna set it to minus 12. <laughs> um, and I don't even know if I'm saying that properly or not, but that's what it says. It has like a little minus sign and then 12 near the decibel thingy where I can have it set to zero and there's no minus sign it's just zero so I'm going to set it to the minus 12 setting and uh, I'm going to see if it sounds any different or if it sounds better or worse or if, you know if you can even notice a change or not I'm going to get on my bike and stop blabbering and we're going to go home all right just going to go a little ways up the highway just to see if it sounds all crackly or not because otherwise we'll be going out of town and I don't want to go out of town. And now home. It'll be handy if um, having this set to a different setting helps reduce the wind noise. Although I do think I just need a thicker wind sock. But anyway, who wants to talk about boring tech stuff anyways? I certainly don't. I just have to think about it because it's kind of part of my whole gig here with YouTube. It's quite a bit of tech involved. Well, more tech than what I would normally be involved with on any average day of my life if I weren't doing YouTube. I'll give you guys an example of how little of a techie person I am. When it came to like computers, I never owned a desktop until I started doing YouTube. And the laptop that I had, I used very minimally for like only the most, like only things that I absolutely had to do online. And it was a secondhand laptop from my sister that was actually like the cheapest laptop you could buy and it was second hand and so slow. I had a TV, but I never had cable. I never had Netflix. And the only time my TV ever got turned on was if I was putting on a show for my sister's kids when they came to visit. Even my cell phones, like I had like the cheapest cell phone that you could get. It wasn't until I started doing YouTube that I actually like spent money on a good laptop, a desktop computer, and a good phone. The last time that I actually sat down myself and like watched a movie was probably like a year ago just about. It was last winter. I went like six years without even owning a TV. 
so yeah I'm just like not a techie person at all I would much rather be like outside doing stuff or like on my motorcycle and there's quite a bit of like being in front of a computer that comes along with having a YouTube channel because like your work it's basically your work is like on the computer aside from actually like being out here making the content like obviously that would be considered like a work too because I'm making the content but then you got to send the time to edit the content and then you know you got to keep up with emails and try to keep up with comments the best that you can and all of that stuff so that's all like sitting in front of a computer and in my opinion it's worth the trade-off if I can make YouTube work for me and just have that be like my source of income and my job then it's definitely worth it because I can go out and be like doing what I would do as a hobby normally when I'm working a normal job and be having that actually be my livelihood like I can go to motorcycle rallies I can go ride my bike it's a little different when you're filming it you enjoy it still but it's not like just going and hanging out and um, you know just kind of thinking about like what the next fun thing you're, you're gonna do is because you're always thinking about like what the next thing you should film is that kind of thing so which I'm fine with I know I'm not very old but I'm also not in an age in my life where I care about going to have like all the fun it, to me like I had a ton of fun at Shovel Fest and like no I wasn't drinking and I wasn't hanging out in the shade and keeping cool with everybody else but I was out there among people that I like, the types of people that I like, that I'm comfortable around, and looking at cool motorcycles. And I would not have been doing that if it weren't for my YouTube channel. I would have been at work somewhere on a different job, wishing I was at Shovel Fest. If I can make YouTube work for me, and I can go to bike rallies and make videos out of it, then all the sitting behind a computer to edit videos and stuff like that is totally worth, totally worth it. If there's anybody out there who thinks YouTube is easy, well, awkward is one thing that it is. <laughs> it's awkward being out there making video of yourself everywhere you go. But aside from it being awkward, it's not easy like it might not be like physically challenging or anything like that but it's definitely mentally and maybe even a little emotionally challenging because on the mental side of it you need to have enough creativity and self-discipline to be constantly coming up with entertaining content for people. It's really hard to actually make it a sustainable thing. Like, I think everyone's got to wait for that big break where, you know, you hopefully go viral one day and then you end up with enough subscribers that your videos get good views. Um, like consistently enough that it actually provides a good source of income and until that day comes which it hasn't for me you you're kind of just like trudging along and actually like scraping by in my case scraping by just because I don't have a secondary job right now out of my own choice 
because I wanted to focus more of my time and my attention on my YouTube channel. And like I said, it's not, it's not easy. It's not physically demanding, but it's mentally and emotionally demanding. And aside from, and um, aside from the mentally demanding side of it, like where you need to be constantly thinking about content, the emotional side, it's not like you go home and cry at the end of every day, like, oh, my YouTube life is terrible. Like, it's not like that. I think on the emotional side, it is, uh, on a normal job, you, there's always people expecting something from you, right? Like, you have your boss who's expecting you to be punctual and to do a good job and, you know, to be reliable and all these things. And you have your co-workers who are expecting from you also to be like someone who is easy to work with, someone who does their job properly and, you know, carries their load. But on YouTube, you don't just have like five or 10 or 20 people expecting something from you. You have thousands of strangers in reality, there's strangers who you've never met and they're all expecting something from you. They're all expecting, yeah, they're all expecting something from you, right? Like it's, they're expecting to see good content. They're expecting to see improvement in the content that you're providing. And they're expecting it kind of regular and that's not a like that's not a complaint or anything like that that's just putting perspective on what it is like actually having youtube and i never thought of any of those things before because i never personally i never if you would have come to me like three years ago and been like you know angel you're gonna be like all over youtube in a couple years and you're gonna have like 15 thousand subscribers on your channel I would have been like you're crazy like I don't want to be on YouTube that's where I was at like three years ago so I never ever thought about all of the aspects of being a YouTube person to me it was just like oh I thought it was easy I thought it was like oh you just go out and you make video and you put it on YouTube and bam there you go you got a YouTube channel and you're gonna be famous and rich and it's not like that at all. You're like a starving artist until you get that big break. And looking at my channel and the fact that I do have 15,000 subscribers in this like the fairly short amount of time that I've been on YouTube, I know that my channel has potential. So it's not something that I want to give up on. I want to figure out how to make it work better for myself. That's what I want to do. I totally relate to Jess when it comes to YouTube being awkward. And like I said, on top of it being awkward, it's not easy. <laughs> and I like commend people like her and People like Shay Tree Surgeon and Shay Lisi who have actually been able to make YouTube like work for them. Well, that was actually a pretty enjoyable ride. I actually almost didn't even go out on my bike because I was just thinking like, I don't want to be cold. Like it's just so much more comfortable to be in the truck when it's cold out. But I'm glad that I did because it was actually a pretty enjoyable ride. And as I've said before, getting a little bit cold on the ride just makes the coffee taste better when you stop or the tea or whatever. Sometimes I drink coffee, but normally tea. I like iced coffees. But yeah, I had a good time. It was a good ride. Possibly the last ride of the season. I'm not sure yet. I've not decided. It's supposed to rain this week coming up. Like I said, I'm just not really into paying for insurance on something that I'm not going to be riding very often. So it may end up being the last ride of the year. I'm not too sure yet. Anyway though, guys, I'm glad that you guys 
guys all joined me in this video. Thanks for watching and like always, if you like what you see or if you just like me, or even if you don't like me, but you like my bikes, then like this video, comment, subscribe, do all those things you guys do. And like always, my lovely YouTube people, I will catch y'all on the flip side. Peace. <laughs>